that deer is really big. He's got a massive frame on him. He kind of rem reminds me of Zeus in a way. Because he's got a... <clears throat> He's got a huge frame, but he's also got like the drip on the end of his beam. So this is another place I've got permission at. I just like booked it over here and ran into the backyard and I slipped up in their gazebo and he was probably a hundred yards kind of down the, uh, the hardwood ridge, down to the creek bottom right there. Laid eyes on him for the first time and he did not disappoint. Uh, this deer is real big. So this marks day one of actually filming the footage for I don't have a name for this deer yet, but he might be kin of Zeus, even though this is probably five miles from where Zeus was killed, but big deer nonetheless, and uh, season comes in in like a month. <sighs> Got some prep work to do. I'm not gonna lie, that scared me, dude. You put your alarm off. <laughs> I'm talking to my friend right now. <laughs> I'm talking to my friend right now. He just turned on that alarm to scare me. You watching me through the ring cameras, huh? Hey, make your alarm go off again. <laughs> I saw the big deer back there. Yeah. He's big, dude. Huh? This is weird. Suburban things. I'll call you. what this place is basically a creek ditch, creek ditch we're in a funnel right here a big pinch because it goes up to a bunch of hardwoods that way and it goes back to another big block of woods and a hardwoods that way i've got fresh scrapes in here and this is not a place you would look on a map and be like oh yeah this is a slam dunk place this is a sleeper spot for sure i've never hunted here before in my life I've never hung a stand but i think we're going to get in this tree right here we'll have plenty of cover and uh I don't know, see what happens tonight. This is a totally new place, new area for me. I got a couple clips of this deer in the summertime. Um, coming in this place and this place is torn up with rubs this whole little knoll hardwood knoll behind me is obliterated with rubs I put in a mock scrape below us and it's just a perfect pinch right here so it is opening day and we're hunting baby I'll also say today is September 11th and I think that it's only right to um, acknowledge today is the 20, 20 year anniversary of September 11th and um, I just wanted to take a second to thank all of our uh, military men and women, um, firefighters, uh, police officers, law enforcement, things like that. I just wanted to say from us here, thank you guys for everything that you do for us and fighting for our freedoms and protecting our safety. So we would not have this beauty to or this uh, privilege to hunt uh, if it weren't for you guys keeping us safe overseas and, and here at home. So. Uh, I think it's only right to say thank you guys, so scrambling around, but we're sitting, baby. Your season. strikes first. <laughs> you can go right there. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's almost done.
we're setting the bucks. Kendall struck gold, baby. We're about to go help him out. So we're gonna get out of here and uh, hopefully go celebrate. <clears throat> All right, I gotta give a uh, quick update on the deer that Tristan and I actually sat um, opening day of the season. Um, <clears throat> I basically had made a decision that I was going to stay out, uh, not pressure the deer, and let the deer show back up on my cameras before I went and hunted again. He's been gone about eight days. Um, he showed back up last night, but in the interim, I went and knocked on uh, a couple more doors, just trying to get other vantage points to hunt this deer at. And I actually knocked on a door that someone else already hunted. Um, the homeowner gave me the person's phone number, and I, just a part of the hunter's code, I make the phone call, say, hey, knocked on your door, just letting you know. Um, and just being courteous, you know, I share information, things like that. And I just honestly like being friends with other hunters that are doing the same thing. So um, touch base with a guy named Justin and a guy named Zach. And Zach, uh, they're both really good dudes. Zach especially is an awesome, awesome dude. I actually met up with him at a gas station and we talked for about an hour just sharing our faith and stories and stuff like that. I actually went and helped him hang a stand in the place um, that I knocked on that they already had. Long story short, Zach has been putting a ton of time and effort into this deer and he sat all day yesterday. The deer came in and he shot right over the top of his back. Um, I think it pushed the deer out of his area and he showed back up on my camera last night after being gone for eight days. And I don't know if he's gonna accept or not, um, but I'm gonna offer him my spot to go sit tonight. And he may turn it down, um, but honestly, I would just rather him get the deer than me. And so I'm gonna call him and see if he wants to do that and I'll go sit with him and film. But I just feel like it's the right thing to do. Hey, what's up, bud? <clears throat> I got a question for you. Let's hear it. Do you want to go sit that deer at my spot tonight? Man, you're crazy. I'm being serious. I, 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 uh, dude, I think that he's gonna come in. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I would, I, I would rather you get the deer than me. That, I mean, that's me being truthful. I'd still love to sit with you, but I'm offering you to finish the story on that deer. Man, I don't even know what to say to you right now. Um, just say yes. Which I, I mean, I, I'll ask, would you do it? I mean, dude, I'm telling you to do it. I'm not really giving you a choice. Let's do it, man. So I'll, uh, I'll get ready to hunt tonight. If you're cool with it, I would still like to film it. Cause I think it's a cool story. And I, dude, I'm, if he sticks to what he's done in the summer, he should roll in there. Let's, uh, I'll touch base with you in about an hour. Okay. And uh, we'll um, we'll go from there. All right. Sounds good, man. I'll touch base I'll, with you then. Thanks, man. See, See ya. You. What's up, boss man? I got it. You ready for the camera? Let's do it. <laughs> This rain's gonna hopefully have them moving. We'll yeah, we'll climb in there. So basically how this deer came came uh, came about was a buddy of mine, Justin Mizell, got a, uh, a Snapchat with a picture, I'm sorry, a video of the deer. And at the time, we couldn't, uh, couldn't really tell much about him. We just tell that he was a real framed live deer. But uh, anyways, got over here, started running some cameras and uh, got pictures of him. Open day we hunted him, 
the day after opening day we hunted and, and uh, didn't get a phone call from Lee. I, I, I actually didn't get a phone call from Lee. I was on the phone with, with my buddy Justin and he called Justin. Well, Justin three-wayed me in and... Uh, yeah, that's what's crazy too is that you happen to be on the phone when I called Justin. It's just like time. all the circumstances. Dude, there's some more stuff there that I could share that's crazy. But uh, it'll have to be for another time. <laughs> it's a long story. But um, yeah, so now we're here. And maybe he'll... Uh, and you had an encounter with him last night. You sat all day right. yesterday. I actually missed this deer last night. Um, maybe 25 yards, 30 yards. And it happens. He stepped out. And <laughs> I saw bone and I got buck fever. <laughs> Slung an arrow a little high, so maybe uh redemption night redemption maybe we'll have a eternal bluff all right we are uh actually headed back to the stand to meet up with zach we hunted uh, the last hit that we had at, at the spot I've got, um, where we have now dubbed him Candy Cane, um, showed up on my camera after Zach's last encounter with him. And what's happened is uh, the last week we've been kind of watching these cameras, uh, trying to get a pattern, get a read on what this deer's doing. Uh, Zach has been hunting like crazy. He's been shuffling around with his spots, uh, pretty much hunting every day. And uh, the deer showed up yesterday evening perfect daylight uh where zach and i sat about a week ago now so rally the troops we're headed back to the stand and uh hoping that we can finish the story uh with zach and this deer candy cane guess what we're back let's get it dude <laughs> All right, so we're sitting in a Lee spot. The spot I hunted last night, he's right in my stand. So. What did I say earlier, Captain Nice? Good job. Good <laughs> job. Dude, it never fails. The place where Zach had his original encounter with the deer, which is across the main road, probably half a mile from here, the deer just showed up. So I think we're going to run down over there. I don't think it's possible to. to put a stalk on that deer over there but I, there's a good vantage point so we may just try to lay eyes on him just kind of see which direction he goes and learn his pattern or what, he, what he's doing so I think we're gonna climb down real quick and run over there I saw him leave off in the woods. You what 100% him? 100 Maybe the other? Freaking... All right this is the craziest thing I've never had this happen. A the buck we were after just crossed the road and got hit by a car. Dude, he was crossing right here. Should I? Oh my gosh! Do I'd pull up, pull, pull up, up on the yeah, be, uh, pull up on the curb. No way. Did y'all hit a deer? Huh? Yeah. You just hit a deer? Yeah. Really? Yeah. It, it oh my gosh, yeah. man. So you can't move the car? Try it. You should be able to pull it now. Try it now. Yeah, y'all okay? Yeah, we're good, bro. Okay. 
in 16 years of hunting the suburb, I've never had this scenario happen in front of me. I mean, literally, we're driving down the road and we saw the buck get hit and it staggered back in the woods. I don't, I mean, if it's, if it killed a thing or if it's mortally wounded, we're gonna try and recover it, but it could have been the big one. It could have been his running buddy. Anyways, we're gonna peek in the woods, see if we see anything. <clears throat> so I've been working from home today. I'm in my office right now. I just got a text from Zach. This is the next day after the deer got hit. I'm calling him right now. He says he sees him. You see him? Yeah, we're looking at him. Is he alive? Oh, yeah. He's good. He's, he's fine. He's fine. No way. Yes, sir. Like, you can't tell he's been hit at all. No. Uh, can you tell, Justin? No, he's just, I mean, just cruising right along, kind of grazing around. Is he, is he over uh, in the same block where he came from yesterday? He is. Dude, all right, we need to be in, we need to be in that in that set tonight for sure. I gotta go run grab a uh, the tethered platform real quick from another tree, and then um, I'll uh, I'll start heading that way. Oh. Holy cow, man, dude! I hope we finish this tonight. I hope so too, this would be so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm gonna go pull a platform. I'm gonna head y'all's way. All right, see ya. So, kind of changing gears here. Um, I've been filming Zach and trying to tell the story of uh, the deer that we had originally named Candy Cane, but have now dubbed Nine Lives because he's been shot at and hit by a car and is still alive. But that deer has, it's just the time of year, man. It's early October. These deer are changing from their summer patterns into more of their fall patterns. They're kind of in these transition areas. They're uh, hitting acorns like crazy right now. We got tons of white oaks falling and this is the time of year that is typically like my least favorite time of year to hunt because deer just get weird. Lull. Yeah, the Lull. October lull if you say. So we're kind of giving that deer a rest. Um, in the meantime, I just got back from Ohio. There's literally still blood on my pants from the buck I killed up there. And I got permission to run a camera at this spot probably two weeks ago from the owner. And in the meantime, he was kind of running everything by his attorneys. And this buck that I've called or have named Willie, uh, I named him Willie because he has a very chocolate rack and Willy Wonka was the chocolate man. We have rain coming this evening. Like right as it gets dark, there's a storm that's gonna hit. So I think that I think he's going to be on his feet for sure. He's definitely in here. Honestly, the biggest trick is going to be getting in there without him detecting us in any way. And I think if we can pull that off, I think we have a good chance at, at breaking the ice for me in Georgia this year. So we're going to slip in here and get some uh, tethers up and get set. Anymore without hitting these giant 
Joro spot Joro? Is that how you say it? Giant spiders. God, there's another one. they're spending a lot of time. I don't want to change a thing. So I didn't cut any limbs, like nothing. I didn't open up any shooting lanes. I literally wanted to change nothing. So I'm gonna have to really find a hole to make something happen. Essentially what we've got is just a, a creek ditch that's running here and there's a hardwood ridge with kind of mixed pines as it goes up here. There's some white oaks back in here. There's a scrape right to our left. There's a car driving by. But this place is, uh, again, it's just like, you gotta find the little hidden gems and this is one of those little hidden places. There's a very good chance if he comes in here, I may not even get a shot. But I don't, I mean, I just don't wanna, I don't wanna tip him off in any way. All right, fellas, a few things. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's a little bit different what we've done in the past. Um, this is just one of the many stories that kind of have gone untold um, that happens to us every year uh, hunting the suburbs. So it was a little bit of a behind the scenes look. Give us some feedback. Let us know if you liked it and you enjoyed it and you want to see more of this kind of stuff. Um, Zach's still hard at it. My encounter with Willie, I have not seen that deer in a month and a half, so I got to put in some work to get back on him and finish that story. Two main things I want to leave you guys with. Um, the first is, is that this video is a prime example of why bow hunting in your more urban and suburban areas is super, super important. Uh, you just saw a car collision happen from a buck where three high school kids were in the truck and they were fine, but obviously that situation could have been more dangerous than it was. And if we had taken that deer 
potentially that situation would have been avoided, been avoided. So super important that bow hunting happens in these places. And the second thing, probably the most important thing is that bow hunting is meant to be something that brings us together. It's not supposed to be something that, that rips us apart. And I've seen friendships get ruined over chasing a deer. And I understand we're all super passionate about it and that's amazing, but make sure that we keep the main thing, the main thing. Don't let it get in the way of friendships, even if it leads to somebody else having that successful story that you kind of wish that you had. So celebrating everybody's success. And uh, like I said, keep the main thing, the main thing. Hope you guys enjoyed this, this episode. Enter our giveaway. We got a bunch of, bunch of cool stuff coming and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Catch you next time, boys.